A season-long journey follows a path to greatness. A destination. A dream. A quest for excellence. It's your time. A time to compete for a place in Nebraska sports history. Great moments are earned here. Play like a champion. Welcome to the NSAA Girls State Basketball Championships on NET. NET Sports, Nebraska's home for championship sports, is live from the Pinnacle Bank Arena in Lincoln, Nebraska for the 2014 NSAA Girls Basketball Championships. And this morning, we kick it off in Class C1, the defending champs, the Pierce Blue Jays, taking on the undefeated Whippets of Minden. And good morning, everybody. I'm Larry Putney, along with Trudy Nolan. Great to have you with us. Andy Kidney will be joining us later. But a day long of state championships right here on NET Sports. Excited to bring it your way today. And we'll get started in Class C1, where, as we said, we have the defending champs in Pierce. But they've got a lot of work to do to make it two in a row against this Minden team. They really do. They're going to work hard to defend that state championship. But on the inside, they have junior Rochelle Tucker. She's a great inside player. She had 29 points on Thursday and 15 points wow. yesterday. They're going to look for that high-low game with Rochelle and also J.C. Bremer on the inside. And for the Whippets, this, is, this really is a sister act. It really is. I mean, what can you say, Larry? There's three of those Kissinger sisters, Brooke, Taylor, and Jamie, who are good shooters. It's going to be interesting to see how Pierce is going to stop them. They're you know, average. Go ahead. Just in two games down here at the state tournament, they have combined the three sisters for 23 threes. Wow. So it will be, like I said, interesting to see how Pierce is going to stop them. They're also going for their first state championship for Menden, which is a great accomplishment for not only them, but for their school. And they are the only undefeated team in the tournament averaging 75 a game down here at the state tournament should be a good one to kick off today the class c1 state championship coming your way pierce and minden right here on net sports a few roundabout rules to remember when you see the roundabout sign slow down Yield at the entrance, watching for other motorists and pedestrians. Roundabout traffic moves from left to right. Don't stop in the roundabout. Signal before you exit and then exit right. Roundabouts are easy to use and safer than a traditional four-way intersection, especially if you follow a few simple roundabout rules. No matter how you look at it, animal agriculture helps Nebraska's economy. The livestock industry provides increased tax revenues for schools and community services. Livestock enterprises also create jobs while contributing to existing businesses such as local banks and grocery stores. A thriving livestock industry helps maintain our current way of life, but also provides opportunities for the next generation of farm families. The Nebraska Soybean Checkoff helps to raise awareness of the importance of animal agriculture to Nebraska. Not only can you watch these games on TV at home, you can also watch the 2014 Nebraska High School Girls Basketball Championships on your computer, tablet, or smartphone at netnebraska.org backslash sports or on the new NET Nebraska app. Download our free app at netnebraska.org slash apps. Welcome back to Pinnacle Bank Arena. I'm Andy Kendi. We are set for our C1 championship game, the Minden Whippets against the Pierce Lady Blue Jays. Time for pregame festivities in the PA address announcement. The Nebraska School Activities Association and its Denver Schools welcome you to the 2014 NSA Girls State Basketball Championship. The NSA is proud to recognize its corporate partners, U.S. Bank, U.S. Cellular, MCPA, Farmers Mutual Insurance, Bonded, Nebraska Orthopedic Sports Medicine, St. Elizabeth Regional Medical Center, Callum Photography, Cliff Keen, Max Preps, and custom sports. And now to honor our nation, please rise and remove your caps, ladies and gentlemen. Today, to sing our national anthem, a junior from Pawnee City High School, Miss Hannah Davis. 
stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rockets and glare, the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Pinnacle Bank Arena for today's Class C1 Girls Championship game between the 22 and 4 Pierce Lady Blue Jays and the 27 and 0 Minden Whippets. Now, let's meet the teams. First, the non starters for Pierce. Number four, Casey Sutherland. Number 10, Shelby Brettschneider. Number 22, Kate Asmus. Number 24, Brianna Pult. Number 30, Brandy Sporletter. Number 32, Christina Schutt. And number 44, Morgan Stone. And now the non-starters for Minden. Number five, Annie Woodward. Number 10, Maddie Hoskins. Number 11, Josie Madsen. Number 23, Jenna Denny. Number 32, Ashton Bolt. Number 33, Janae Boudreau. Number 34, Lily Steen. Number 44, Marissa Weaver. And number 50, Emily Malcolm. And now, ladies and gentlemen, here's the starting lineup for the Pierce Lady Blue Jays. Eight, five, seven, junior, number two. Allison Colmus. Pick five four junior number twelve, Sydney Salachek. Pick six one sophomore number fourteen, JC Raymer. Pick five seven senior number twenty, JC Brett Schneider. And a 6'2 junior, number 42, Rochelle Tucker. The assistant coaches for the Blue Jays are Philip Wiedenfeld and Caitlin Donovan, and the head coach for Pierce, Darren Sindelar. And now here's the starting lineup for the Minden Whippets. Eight, five, six, junior number 20, Allie Rouse. 
And 5'8", senior number 22, Brooke Kissinger. And 5'11", freshman number 24, Taylor Kissinger. And 5'9", senior number 40, Jamie Kissinger. And a 5'10", sophomore number 45, Rebecca Stewart. The assistant coaches for the women's are Greg Satorius and Don Miller, and the head coach for Minden, Rick Kromosta. The officials for today's Class C1 championship game are Robbie Lupton, Eric Whitemore, and Scott Johnson. The bench official is T. Brian O'Neill. Ladies and gentlemen, let's play basketball! All right, ready for our first eight championship of the day. The Pierce Blue Jays up in Siouxland in northeast Nebraska. Minden a Whippets just out I-80 and a bit south. Should be a good one. The Whippets coming in undefeated on the season. As we said, the Lady Jays, the defending state champs. How do they get here? Well, Minden knocked off Lincoln Lutheran in round one, and then a win over Platteview Pierce. Knocked off Shadron in round one and Cardi Catholic. That was a rematch of last year's state championship when Pierce beat Cardi Catholic. So Pierce back here once again looking for two in a row. But as we set up the top, this Whippets team has been extremely impressive down here, averaging 75 points a game. And they've got that three-headed monster in those three sisters. Yeah, they do. And you know, down here, they've had 79 points the first game, 72 the second game. They need 53 points to actually get break the C1 tournament team scoring record, which if they keep on what they've done the last two games, that certainly can happen today, Larry. Trudy will be keeping track of that for you throughout the day. There's Darren Sindelar, the Pierce head coach. You saw Rick Cromosta, the head coach of the Minden Whippets, ready to go as we tip it off. Tip one by Rochelle Tucker. Chased down, but right on the edge of the line is Allison Colmus and They'll turn it over on their first possession. So now the Whippets. And you know, Pierce has been pretty much on a 2-3 zone. So it looks like that's what they're going to stay in for this game. You know they're going to look on the outside, though, for those Kissinger girls, wherever they are. Really watch for this Whippet team. They love to drive and kick. And they'll take the three from anywhere. That's just off. Rebound in the hands of Brett Schneider. J.C. Brett Schneider will bring it up the floor. For the Lady Jays, familiar names from a year ago for this Jays team, including Rochelle Tucker, who you saw at the top of the key. 6-2, they feed it in to Tucker, down low, off the glass. First points of the game for the Lady Jays. And you know, as you look at Pierce, they really, they only have one senior on their team. So you know these girls were here last year, most of them. It's just another, you know, game here, not too many nerves probably. In fact, from last year's state championship team, Pierce losing five seniors off that team. Katie Adkins, Adkins not here. Brannigan Stonacek, Devin Natt, Rachel Wiedenfeld. Those girls have been playing together for a long time. Kissinger at the line now to shoot two. Jamie Kissinger, one of the three sisters, the senior, 5'9 senior. Headed next year to play basketball at San Diego. Two Division I recruits on this Whippets team, both sisters. And you know, JC on for Pierce does a nice job of bringing the ball down and taking control of the floor there. And there's the other JC, um, Bramer, who is, that's what I was saying at the beginning, they're gonna look for Rachel and JC on that inside. And on the kick, the turnover. Hands up in that 2-3 zone, and the Lady Jays off to the quick start here in this C1 state championship. I'll feed it inside again, and you see Pierce's game plan inside early and often for head coach Darren Sindelar. You know, and he mentioned that, you know, they're really a half-court offensive team. They will try to get it in transition, but they like to set things up half-court, and that's because they like to look inside to those two girls. The shot is blocked right into the hands of Rochelle Tucker, and Tucker with four here early on. Three rattles out, tipped around, and we have a push down below. Push will be called on the Jays. 
They've got J.C. Bramer with the foul. So Bramer already with two fouls here early on. And Bramer will take a seat. And Shelby Brett Schneider in for the Lady Jays. And you know, Rick Ramosta is saying, take those threes anytime they are open. He wants those girls to be taking them. And over to this point from beyond the arc for the Whippets. 3 three-pointers have yet to hit one. And a hold underneath will be called on the Whippets. It's like Rebecca, make it Kissinger, Jamie Kissinger foul called her first. Give and go right into Tucker. Tucker fouled on the drive. They'll say she was before the shot, so it will be whip its ball out of bound. Make it pierce ball out of bounds. And this is going to be a little different. You know, Rebecca Stewart does a great job on the inside for Menden, not only on offense but on defense, but a little bit different now that you know, she's got a big girl in there that is the main scorer for Pierce that she has to defend today. Salachek with the strong drive to the basket, and she is fouled. That foul called on Brooke Kissinger. And there's a look at that. You know, Sydney does a great job of driving in. She can also shoot the threes. Yesterday, she, you know, had the outside game as well. Salachek, 5'4", junior, averages six a game. Best outside shooter on the team, according to Coach Darren Sindelar. She was big in the semifinals, hit back-to-back -back threes in a really tight game to open it up for Pierce. So Pierce on top here, 7-1 early on. Whippets shots have not fallen yet. Here's the drive and kick, drive inside. Little right-handed shot up, rebound comes down, loose on the floor. Brett Schneider is on it, and controlled by the Jays. And you know, at this point, um, Minden being down six, yesterday they had a little trouble at the beginning getting some shots to fall as well, and they'll keep taking it to them. Great give from Tucker to Brett Schneider. Brett Schneider fouled by Kissinger Brooke. That's her second. And there's the look inside on Brett Schneider there on um, Shelby, taking it on the inside. Again, that's that high low that, that Pierce likes to look at. Brett Schneider, 5'9", sophomore, averages Three and a half points a game. Picks up both there from the line. 9-1. Lady Jays in command here early. Just three minutes in. Just really extending that defense on the shooters. They really are. It's a really wide 2-3. And that's why they need to stay on the outside because they are not going, even though they haven't fallen, they're going to keep taking them on the outside. And that was Brooke Kissinger. She's on her way next year to Illinois to play Big Ten basketball. Drive, Brett Schneider, shot is off. You know, yesterday, Brooke had two fouls in the first quarter very quickly, but she never came out because Rick knows he's got to have her in that game. Brett Schneider with the steal. Can't get it to go. An alert defense by Brett Schneider. And another drive by Kissinger. Brooke Kissinger now with five in the game. And the Whippets have cut it to three. And that's the hard part about Minden. You can extend yourself out to take away that outside game, but they also are good at driving on the inside. And that's why coaches have a hard time. What kind of defense should they play against them? Tucker from the free throw line with a jumper. 6-2 junior. Three the other way. And the Whippets bury it. Pounded by Taylor Kissinger. She is a freshman. You would never know it. She does not play like a freshman. She's very relaxed. She takes the shots. She knows what her role is on this team. Three Kissinger seniors as we pulled you off the top. The twins, both seniors. Going to play Division I basketball next year. The freshman, a future Division I player, already with offers. The other end, Tucker again. And Tucker, very effective early on here. She has eight already. 
And the steal. Brett Steiner with it. Brett Steiner goes in. Block. Got to run the rebound. First two for Brett Steiner. 15-9. What a great way to open up this state tournament. Up and down the floor. Action three on the way. Rattles off. And we have a push underneath. That foul will go against it. Looks might be J.C. Brett Schneider. It is. You know, that's what helps Minden. They take a lot of those threes. And if those threes go off that hoop a little bit differently, they have a good inbound or a good rebounder with Rebecca Stewart in there. So an exciting up and down the floor action here in the Class 2 1 State Championship. Action continues right here on NET Sports. Over the years, the Nebraska Chiropractic Physicians Association has supported many Nebraska athletes by helping them excel physically. But the mental game is just as important. That's why we're pleased to sponsor the NSAA Academic All-State Award Program, recognizing students and athletes who shine in the classroom and as leaders. We're proud to team up with these exceptional individuals. Together, we can continue to make Nebraska a great place to live, learn, and play. Ever wish your bank were right at your fingertips? Hey honey, thanks for depositing that check for me today. Love you. Uh, love you too. I love you more. I love you way more. You're the best. You're way better. You're my huggy bear. In Branch, online, on your iPad, iPhone, Android, or Blackberry, US Bank is there when you need us. Welcome back to the C1 Championship game where Pierce is the early dude over Minden, 15 to nine. And even though Pierce is the defending C1 state champion, tennis coach Darren Sindelar told his team, hey, listen, we are the underdogs. We have nothing to lose. Minden is the team that's undefeated. Let's go out and play like we have nothing to lose, guys. Ah, good mental flip there by head coach Darren Sindelar. They're the defending champs. Why not get a little edge, feel that underdog pressure, that underdog incentive. Again, Tucker effective from just beyond the free throw line. Nice game for that junior, 6-2. You know, it's a little difficult, though, for both teams because Menden's trying to defend their unbeaten record, and also Pierce is coming back trying to get another state title. So they both have, a, you know, quite a bit that they're playing for here. Uh, travel on the whip at 17-9, and... Rochelle Tucker already with 10 points here in this first quarter of action. Good. Cindy does a nice job of driving in. Like I said, she likes to take it to the basket. She knows she has Rochelle down there to help rebound anything down below as well. Rochelle Tucker. Picks up her first foul. She's had a very effective game to this point. You know, we talked about them, uh, Minden, breaking possibly the C1 tournament team scoring. The other thing is the Kissingers are close to the 15 um, threes in a state tournament. Right now, Taylor has 11, so it's another record that they could be looking at as well. Left-handed drive, can't get the shot to go. Rebound pulled down by Brett Schneider. And the turnover. And now the Whippets will pick up full court. And drop back defensively. And Minden does like to play that full court man-to-man, -man, trying to get those turnovers. Rebound pulled down by Rebecca Stewart. Outside, shot by Taylor Kissinger. Rattles around and in. Her second three. Again, as a freshman, she is not scared to shoot that ball, which is great because she is a great shooter. Boss inside, doubled underneath. Goes off the hand of Jamie Kissinger and out of bounds. It will stay with the Jays. 
And you know, Minton playing that man-to-man. -man. Rebecca's trying to get around Rochelle. That means that they, they're going to need that backside help because you know they're going to try to lob it into Rochelle Tucker. Shot by Britt Schneider off. Rebound to the floor. And the turnover on Minden. And that's the other part that can hurt. You know, right now Minden has five turnovers. I'm sure Rick is saying we just need to take care of the basketball. We're down by five. We need good shots. Red Schneider brings it up and loses it. Strong to the basket. Good take by Brooke Kissinger. She's fouled and will be shooting two. Foul called on J.C. Brett Schneider. That's her second personal foul. And as you see there, that was a good take on the layup there by Brooke. She does a nice job with the ball fake because they think she's going to shoot on the outside. So she does a nice job with the ball fake and taking it in on the drive. Both J.C.'s, J.C. Bramer, J.C. Brett Schneider with two personal fouls here early for the Lady Jays. Rebound long. Pierce holds on to that four-point lead. Salachik with the travel. And you'll see a lot of times, you know, it's it, it's a little more difficult on that two-three that because Pierce is spreading it out, but Minden likes to spread it out and drive and kick. The step back three is off the back of the rim by Brooks. She'll throw it up again. Right at the buzzer, and comes up short. Terrific first period of play, lots of action up and down the floor. Pierce leads it, 17-13 in the C1 championship game. Behind your outlet are more than 6,000 public power employees working tirelessly to generate and deliver safe, affordable, reliable electricity 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. Since they are customer owners themselves, you can count on them to have your best interests and those of the community they serve at heart. Neighbors serving neighbors. That's public power. This isn't the sweet corn that humans eat. It's the field corn that most Nebraska farmers grow. And it satisfies the appetite of a growing world by providing livestock feed, renewable fuel, bioplastics, and much more. You can't eat field corn, but the economic impact of the billion bushels that Nebraska farmers grow each year is still pretty darn sweet. Nebraska's Family Corn Farmers, sustaining innovation. of state championship action right here on NET Sports. Starting bright and early this morning in Class C1, Minden and Pierce. One period in the books, Pierce on top by four. Pierce really has been effective going inside to Tucker. And that helps when Solacek starts knocking it down from outside. That'll open things up. A seven point lead now for Pierce. Bye bye. The Whippets, Rebecca Stewart back up strong, and Stewart with her first two points. Yeah, she's a good force inside Stewart. Is. She's only a sophomore, so she does a great job in there of getting rebounds. She's got a tough job today with Rochelle Tucker. Prior to that bucket by Stewart, all points were scored by the Kissinger twins for with the Whippets. Stewart tries to kick it into the corner. Good save. Three on the way by Taylor is long. And the rebound by Shelby Brett Schneider. You know, one of the things right now, though, Minden is not getting second shots on offense. Um, Pierce has gotten six, point, six of their points just off of second shots. No shot. Foul comes on the floor on Rochelle Tucker. Foul will be called on Rebecca Stewart. Second foul on Stewart. Now, 
Brooke Kissinger, Rebecca Stewart, both with two fouls for the Whippers. Salachek can't get the runner to go. But Pierce still up by five. Kissinger, no question, throws up the three. And from three-point range right now, Minden shooting just 25%. Good feed inside as Brecksteiner worked the backside and got the layup. And Pierce opening it up, back up by seven. Yeah, Selachuk does a nice job of, you know, running the floor, being the leader, making those good passes and looking up the floor. And here's another great pass up to Rochelle Tucker up the floor. And I think that is going to be three on Rebecca Stewart. That will make a big change for Menden. And here it is, there's a good pass by Selachuk as she's looking up the floor at Brett Schneider there. A good, nice pass up the floor. And a big foul coming up here on Stewart as Tucker puts it in and extends that lead. Well, Pierce, the defending champs, they're out to the lead here. Let's take a look back at last year and find out how they won that C1 state title. It was a regular season rematch between Pierce and Kearney Catholic in last year's Class C1 championship. The Blue Jays were on a mission, jumping out to a 9-1 lead before Kearney Catholic knew what hit them. But the Stars would put up a fight. Kearney Catholic rallied to narrow the gap to one before Pierce responded. The Blue Jays went into halftime up 24-16. Unfortunately for the Stars, they would get no closer in the second half. Pierce was led by senior Christina Kepke, who posted a double-double with 16 points and 10 boards while Rachel Tucker was second in scoring for the Blue Jays with 15 points of her own. Pierce won their first state title in school history, defeating Kearney Catholic 51-34 in last year's Class C-1 championship. And that was their first ever trip to a state title game. This their second ever trip and trying to go two for two in state title games. And this young lady right here, a big part of it here early on is she already has 12 points looking to make it 13 of her team's 25 if she can knock this down and make it a three-point play. Off the rim. Nine-point lead for Pierce, 24-15. Runner in the lane. Brooke Kissinger can't get it to go. Rebound to the Whippets, though, reset. Pierce doing a nice job of that 2-3 of getting those hands up and creating the turnover. And then they give it right back. Yeah, they really are. You know, it, it's hard, as I said, to defend because they want to spread it out. They cannot let the Kissinger shoot on the outside. But the, about, the other part is the Kissingers are going to drive in, either look for their shot or to kick it to one another. Three, Brooke Kissinger from way out Three. knocks it down. I'm not sure if she noticed there's tape there. You can go up a little closer. <laughs> that is a great shot on the outside. Back-to-back -back turnovers now by the Lady Jays. You know, one thing that's hard, Larry, is they're coming, Minden's coming in with, you know, the 27-0 record, and people are targeting, looking at them. You know, they could come out a little bit nervous here, but there is a lot of game left, and those Kissingers have a lot of shots in them yet. These teams that can get hot from three-point range can put up a lot of points in a hurry. And the threes make a huge difference on those scores. Good feet ahead and a lay-in by Sidney Salacek. And Salacek with six now. Kissinger got it again, way downtown. Brooke Kissinger, back-to-back -back threes from about 23 feet. Now, Brooke has 12 right now, so you know that Pierce is going to have to come out up on top, which then she's going to try to drive Brooke well and dish it out. Back it down low, the turnaround. Nice turnaround by Shelby Brett Schneider, this, just a sophomore. Yeah, you know, Shelby's done a great job coming in because Jason Bramer's on the bench with two fouls right now. Another three pointer. Wow! <laughs> that is what it takes. She, I think, decided on that timeout, it is time to go. And that's what an, uh, you know, a true basketball athlete will do. 
Yeah, he's five for nine from outside the arc, 15 points already. Mitch shaking up is Shelby Brett Schneider. There's a look on the inside, a good pass on in the inside there to Brett Schneider. It was close there for Brooke Kissinger to get her third foul there. So Shelby being attended to on the floor. She's been an impactful player here for Pierce as a sophomore, just averaging three a game, but already with eight in the game, 28-24. We've seen Shelby effective on the boards as well. She already has five rebounds, eight points, and good to see her getting back to her feet. One more look. Yep, there's a look on the inside. Looks like she, you know. A little blow to down. the head, yeah. Yeah, I think so. I think hit her head there on the floor, so we'll sit out for a few minutes. I bet we will see her back very soon. So she was fouled, I believe. I'm not sure if they called the foul on the floor or on the shot. There's Shelby already, eight points, five rebounds. Very effective off the bench. And one of the keys is, you know, we got some foul trouble going a little bit on, really on both teams. Um, you know, J.C. Bramer's back in now. She has two. J.C. Brett Schneider, she also has two. Um, and then for Minden, Rebecca Stewart's on the bench with three, and Brooke Kissinger has two. So because of the injury to Brett Schneider, she takes the seat. They put in J.C. Bramer to shoot the free throws, and the first one good by the sophomore, J.C. Bramer. Now this was a good move. They put in J.C. Bramer to shoot the free throws, and I believe they have someone sitting ready to come in because she does have two fouls and probably does not want her to get three before half here. So she steps in, knocks down the free throws. And now they're discussing whether or not she can come in and shoot the free throws right after a made three. Can they substitute Brianna Bolt back in? And they're telling Darren Sindelar that because she went in for the injury that Bolt cannot sub back in. And now the officials will get together and She will have to wait for the next dead ball before going back in for J.C. Bramer. So now Bramer in the game, playing with two. Two fouls. Bramer trying to avoid number three. Three-point shot is off. And Brett Schneider now brings it up for the Jays. Now here's that high-low that they're looking for, for Pierce. Rebound right back up strong goes Bramer. Can't get it. Bramer back up again. Ball tipped around. Tucker's got it. Goes back up. And finally, Tucker is fouled by Jamie Kissinger. You know, and here's going to be the hard part for Menden. Right now, Jamie Kissinger is really the biggest, the tallest person they have on the floor to get Rochelle Tucker out of there on any second chance shots. Now, Brianna Bolt can come in for J.C. Bramer. Second one is good. And now Menden's made a little shift. They've put Jamie there um, on the high, or excuse me, Taylor there on the high post, bringing her in. I think trying to collapse that 2-3 in a little bit so Brooke can open up on the outside. Been impressive with the defense by the Lady Jays to this point. Now well, call the... Called a travel on Salacek. One more look. Say no foul. 
And a travel the other way as well. Back to back turnovers now for Minden. And as I was saying, the Jays in that 2 3 zone have done a nice job on the drive and kick of getting hands on the ball when the Whippets are trying to kick it back outside. They are. You know, in Sydney, Slachek has done a great job of bringing the ball up because she has Britt Kissinger on her, who is a great defender as well. She's taking care of the basketball, she's the leader out there on that floor. Tucker in the lane. Off the back, no good. Rebound, Minden. Two minutes before half. Here still with the seven-point advantage. Three on the way. Got it. Jamie Kissinger with the three-pointer. First three of the game for Jamie. And as I mentioned, they have Taylor standing there at the high post. They're trying to get that 2-3 in so that they can open up on the outside. I wouldn't doubt it if they'll switch Jamie and Taylor at some point on the outside, too. Hold down low. It'll be called on Allison Rouse. Rouse picks up her first foul. You know, the free throw line, J.C. Brettschneider, she is the only senior on the team. So she's the leader of this team, um, you know, as the senior. But on the floor, I think Sydney Slachuk has done a great job of bringing the ball up and kind of being the leader on offense here. Brett Schneider's second is off the back of the rim. Rebound, Brooke Kissinger. Hits the trailing Taylor. Taylor drives in, left-handed layup. Good by the freshman. And good hustle and a foul called on Pierce. Nice defensive play by Allie Rouse. It is, you know, and that's what Menden likes to do, the man-to-man -man pressure defense, cause those turnovers, and then they're going to try to connect on those turnovers every time that they can. Back into the game is Shelby Brett Schneider after that injury, so a good round of applause for Shelby. Three on the way. Got it! That gives Minden its first lead of the game, 32-31. Brooke now with six three-pointers, 18 points here in the first half. Uh -oh. And Brooke called for a foul, but she had her hand on the ball, but one more look. Yep, hand right on the hand. So Kissinger with the foul, that will put Salachek at the line. Now, this is going to be a tough decision for Rick here. <laughs> Leave her in or take her out. Yesterday, as I said, she had two fouls in the first quarter. He never even made him a motion to take her out. Needed to have her in there. And there you can see the foul trouble for Menden. Um, you know, both Brooke and, and um, Rebecca with three fouls and the other two Kissingers each with two. So, you know, some adjustments he may need to make. But I think also Brooke probably is a smart enough player. She knows now I got to stay away. I can I got to go into half with only three. Free throw now by Sydney Salachet. Second one is good, and we are even at 32. 123 to go here, first half of the C1 championship. Pierce led it by as many as nine, but the three-point shooting by Brooke Kissinger has got the whippets back into it. Three on the way, the front. Rebound by Pierce, and now Pierce will push it up. To Tucker underneath the easy lay-in for Rochelle Tucker. And Tucker now with 15. Slapped away by J.C. Brettsteiner with the steal. She's got the breakaway. Brettsteiner with the lay-in. Pierce back up by four. You know, Pierce has done a great job of looking up the floor. They're usually that half-court offense, but today they are looking up the floor and looking to run. Three on the way, grab and shoot. Kissinger wasting no time. No shot clock in high school basketball, but if there was, the Whippets would have no trouble with it. <laughs> Inside to Tucker. Kick back up. Here we'll see Pierce probably go for one, go into half. Hopefully, you know, they're hoping for at least a six or seven point lead here at half. Inside, 10 seconds to go. The drive. The block by Kissinger, Taylor. 
3.7 to go on the inbounds for Pierce. And to prevent anyone from picking up a third personal, they'll sit Brooke Kissinger, and in comes Addie Woodward. Yeah, good move there by Rick. He doesn't need her to get four fouls with 3.7 seconds before half. On the inbounds, nice play off the back screen. And that will do it. Pierce goes on a 6-0 run to end that first half of play. And Pierce on top, 38-32 as we head to half of the C1 State Championship game. Let's go over to Andy Kendi. All right, thanks, Larry, with head coach Darren Sindelar. Darren, the great start is to just what you wanted, and your your girls answered their punch. We did. You know, the, we told them they're going to shoot the ball from the outside, and, um, you know, we got to weather that thing, but we got to be able to score the basket, and we've been able to, to get them in a little bit of foul trouble. We've been able to hit some shots, so, yeah, we, we're, we're staying in it. How do you defend them better? Maybe guard them all full court? Yeah, I don't know. Maybe we can slip a six girl on there or something, but, you know, they're going to make their shots, and we've just got to continue to do the things that we're doing. Well, you're halfway home. Good luck in the second Thank half. You. Yeah, Pierce off to a great start, 38-32, Larry. All right, thanks, Andy. The defending state champs with the lead at half. Halftime festivities coming your way from the Pinnacle Bank Arena in Lincoln. Constellation believes in developing the next generation of Nebraska leaders, and we show that support by contributing to 4-H and FFA in the 60 Nebraska counties we serve. Nearly $50,000 over the past two years alone. Constellation provides natural gas for Nebraska homes, farms, ranches, and businesses. Through our support for 4-H and FFA, we're providing energy for Nebraska's future as well. Natural gas from Constellation. Whether it's spring planting, fall harvesting, or just a drive across the state, soy biodiesel helps a diesel-powered engine operate in a demanding job. Soybean oil from Nebraska soybeans makes biodiesel a renewable fuel that's also environmentally responsible. The soybean checkoff plays a major role in supporting the use and availability of biodiesel. The Nebraska Soybean Board, growing opportunity from the ground up. Coverage of the NSAA Girls High School Basketball Championships on NET is made possible in part by the Nebraska Soybean Board, MPPD, Nebraska Public Power District, the Nebraska Corn Board, Constellation, Nebraska Department of Roads, and by Aurora Cooperative. A big thank you to all of our sponsors who help us bring you the NSAA Basketball Championships on NET. We couldn't do it without your support. And welcome back courtside. It's the C1 Championship game. We're at halftime. Pierce leading Minden 38 to 32. I'm Andy Kenny. Joining me is the NSAA Assistant Director John Dollar. And John, I know that you are basically in charge of this basketball experience. And evidently, we have a new home. Tell us about it. And how has the tournament been going so far in the Pinnacle Bank Arena? Uh, the tournament has gone very, very well in the new venues. Uh, we, we are obviously in the Pinnacle Bank Arena today. Uh, and, and we had a move from Pershing Center to uh, the newly renovated Bob Devaney Sports Center. Uh, in, in the first year, in the first uh, tournament and championships that we've had in this arena, uh, we couldn't have had a better start. So we're, we're very, very excited about it. You mentioned a lot of change. What is the biggest challenge moving into a new venue to feature your tournaments? Well, you know, the, the biggest challenge and change would normally be working with different people but we actually uh, the Devaney Center staff is great they, they've been there the entire time we were there for the championships and then the people here at Pinnacle Bank uh, were actually at the Pershing Center and so uh, you would think that that would be a, a huge challenge but it actually worked in our favor when we did move over here uh, it was a lot of work though getting getting the pieces all to fit together and how uh, we would fit in this venue especially uh, 8,000 seats in the lower bowl and, and facilitating crowd movement and those things certainly a work in progress but is going well so far what kind of feedback have you gotten from not only the faculty and the members schools but also the students so far yeah we've, we've had positive feedback you know this arena speaks for itself it's an opportunity for a lot of communities a lot of people from across Nebraska when they come to Lincoln to get to the Pinnacle Bank Arena uh, if they don't get a chance to come to a Husker game or to a concert uh, it's a great opportunity to be in here and uh, they are very very pleased with what they see when they get here 
Now, I want to ask you, you know, there had been some discussion in the past about the format of the tournaments, both boys and girls. Currently, it's three days, uh, four sites, uh, six classes. Uh, are you happy with that, or going forward, uh, would you look at maybe possibly tweaking that system? You know, we, we did a survey with our member schools uh, last year because of the new venue changes, and uh, what, they, what they said to us was they like it how it is. Um, the three days, the four sites, um, it's, it's kind of a tradition, and I think people are, uh, they, they like what we do and how we do it. And, you know, moving into these venues, it's been, uh, I think it's something that we'll, we'll continue to do. And behind every great event is a great city and a great host city. Lincoln has been just that for you, correct? Yeah, Lincoln, Lincoln does a great job for us. We have great people we work with at the CVB. Uh, the people at Lincoln Public Schools uh, at, our, at our high school sites do a great job. Uh, Butch Hug and his staff at the Bob Devaney Sports Center, and then Tom Lorenz and his staff here at Pinnacle Bank. Uh, we couldn't do this without all of the people that work for them and with them. Uh, we're just thankful that we're here in Lincoln and, and providing a great championship opportunity uh, for the athletes across Nebraska. He's John Dolliver. He's with the NSAA. He runs the basketball program. Continued success, there, sir. We are at halftime of the C1 championship game. Pierce 38, Minden 32. We'll be back with the second half after this. It's easy to spot people who participated in high school sports and activities. Right on time. They learned important lessons like leadership, teamwork, respect. Hey, our meeting moved to 10. We'll be ready. Values that last a lifetime. We need to focus on three factors. Support high school sports and activities in your community. When kids take part, they get set for life. When something's difficult, like defying gravity or navigating the new healthcare law, why face it alone? Call or visit us at the Blue Store at NebraskaBlue.com. Ask Blue your questions like, what's required? And can I get help paying for it? Then rely on Blue to help you navigate the system. Most Nebraskans are required to have health insurance or face penalties. Time is almost up. Get what you need. Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Nebraska. Constellation believes in developing the next generation of Nebraska leaders, and we show that support by contributing to 4-H and FFA in the 60 Nebraska counties we serve. Nearly $50,000 over the past two years alone. Constellation provides natural gas for Nebraska homes, farms, ranches, and businesses. Through our support for 4-H and FFA, we're providing energy for Nebraska's future as well. Natural gas from Constellation. Behind your outlet are more than 6,000 public power employees working tirelessly to generate and deliver safe, affordable, reliable electricity 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. Since they are customer owners themselves, you can count on them to have your best interests and those of the community they serve at heart. Neighbors serving neighbors. That's public power. Back at the Pinnacle Bank Arena, halftime of the Class C-1 state championship game. It was 32 all until Pierce goes on a 6-0 run. Minden has been hot shooting the ball in the second period. Early on, though, they struggled a bit, which really allowed Pierce to get uh, and take that early lead, and now they lead here 38-32 at half. They did. You know, they're trying to extend that 2-3 defense. They have to know where Brooke is at all times because right now she is five for eight from the three-point line, and she's going to continue to take them. You know, and the other part, though, is she's in a little bit of foul trouble, and here she is on the outside. Anytime she's open, she is going to put those up, and there they are setting a screen so that she can get an open shot on the outside as well. Six, four, make it five of ten from outside the arc. This she had five threes. And here's Pierce, and there is Sydney Solacek taking a nice drive in. Rochelle Tucker had the shot there, and there she is on the outside. She has been a force on the inside and outside. But the other part that Pierce has done is they have ran the floor very well. They haven't had to get in their half court, you know, transition very much because they have been pushing the ball up the floor. As you look at the stats here, I mean, one of the big things is the three-point field goals. Minden right now is 8 for 21, and sometimes you would think, my gosh, they're taking a lot of threes, haven't made them, but Rick Hermosa, I know, is saying keep taking them. That's what their game plan is from there. 
Um, the other part is the free throws. You know, Pierce has shot 13 free throws because right now Minden is in a little bit of foul trouble, especially with their two big players, um, Brooke Kissinger and Rebecca Stewart as well. Well, speaking of Rick Carmosta, Andy Kendi is with him. Yeah, I'm with the Minden head coach. Coach, tell me um, your thoughts of the first half. What went well? What didn't go well for your Gators? Well, what didn't go well is our defensive effort's not very good, and they're getting a lot of easy shots. We're going to have to do something better out there the second half. Now, we made some threes, I guess, but our biggest issue is our defense right now. You haven't been in a lot of close games this year. Do you think that will affect your kids down the stretch here? Ah, these kids know how to play. We just need to battle back. We can uh, hit a couple shots, tighten up our defense. We'll get back in the ball game here. We'll be okay. All right, good luck in the second half, Coach. You know, I mentioned they haven't been in a lot of close games, Larry. Just two of their 27 games were decided by single digits. Wow. And they're in one here, actually trailing at the half, 38-32. Second half action coming your way. Hey mom, I need to talk to you about something. You took me on campus visits and helped me with college applications, but there's still something we haven't done yet. It's time to complete the FAFSA so I can get financial aid. I know you've been stressed out about this, but don't worry. Education Quest has tons of resources on their website to make the process really easy. You guys have been there for me every step of the way. Just returning the favor. Get help with your FAFSA at educationquest.org. When you've been around for more than a century, you understand the power of generations, the value of nurturing and developing those who will carry on the legacy of agriculture and food production. That's why the Aurora Cooperative helps young people gain the experience, expertise, and wisdom to feed the world, be good stewards, become responsible community leaders, and continue setting the example for the generations that follow. The Aurora Cooperative, growing opportunities. Coverage of the NSAA Girls High School Basketball Championships on NET is made possible in part by Blue Cross Blue Shield of Nebraska, by U.S. Bank, and by Education Quest Foundation. A big thank you to our sponsors who help us bring you the NSAA Basketball Championships on NET. We couldn't do it without your support. As you sit around watching the game today, uh, you might want to pull out your computer and log on to Facebook.com slash NET Sports and like us, like NET Sports. You can become a fan. We'll certainly keep you updated on our NET Sports broadcast schedule. You can leave comments, questions, chat about the game. I mean, great opportunity to get online and chat about this terrific game we're seeing here in the Class C1 State Championship. It's easier than ever to be part of NET Sports. We are Nebraska's home for sports. There's a look at Darren Sindelar, his Lady Jays. I said a 6-0 run. It was actually a 7-0 run. It was 32-31. The Whippets took that brief lead at 32-31 after the three-pointer by Brooke and the drive there, and they cut it back to four. That's Jamie Kissinger with the bucket. And, you know, we heard Rick at halftime. One of his things was defense. He, I'm sure, was not happy with them getting, not getting back. Rochelle Tucker, though, is a good post player that can run the floor, so they are going to have to get back. Lost inside. Knocked away from J.C. Bramer. Good help defense by Minden from the backside. Saw the opportunity taking a great bounce pass underneath. Shot up once and twice, and Rebecca Stewart puts it in the second time. And remember Rebecca Stewart playing right now with three fouls. And you know right now it's really with the scoring it's the Kissinger's 32 and Pierce 38. Wow. <laughs> and Rep Stewart has put in four to help out the, the Minden Whippets as well. And Kissinger from three rolls around. Stewart with the bucket and put back. Big rebound by Stewart. And we're all even at 38 early here in period number three. A 6-0 run to come out of the halftime locker room by the Whippets. A quick timeout called by Darren Sindelar. Great to be able to bring you these high school championships all day long right here on NET Sports. And if you like it, We'd love you to become a member of our Sports Partners Club. You can help us deliver some inspiring sports programming by joining 
the Sports Partners Club. Your contribution helps to ensure that events like this continue to happen for years to come. And you'll get some great thank you gifts from NET as you being part of our Sports Partners Club. Log on to netnebraska.org slash sportspartners and become a member today. So that 6-0 run by the Whippets. We're all even at 38. And just as Rick had said, Camosa at halftime, we're okay, we're right there. I'm sure it was very calm in the locker room as well. We just need to go out and play our game. They hadn't been playing what they wanted to do, especially getting back on defense. And now Pierce needs to get back to what they were doing the first half as well, making things happen on the inside. Inside to Tucker. Tucker with the left-hand turnaround, won't go. Rebound Minden. All of a sudden, that Minden defense that no doubt Rick Cremosta had a chat with his players about. Brooks three on the way, no good. A push underneath. And that is going to be foul number four on Rebecca Stewart. Oh, and that makes a big change for Menden because she has come out here and had, you know, the first points here of the second half. So that can make a big difference on not only rebounding, but also on offense as she goes to the bench with four fouls right now. She had that big rebound and put back to tie it at 38. Had four points here early in the third. And she is the inside presence for the Whippets. Now she will sit early on here in the third with four fouls. The other thing, Minden's made a little change here. They don't have Brooke on, and Sydney Salachek anymore because I think they're probably afraid she's going to try to drive into the basket. And another fourth foul picked up by Brooke Kissinger, and that is huge. Kissinger with 18 points. She tried backside help, and no question, she knew it. You know, though, she looked over at Rick Kermos and said, I'm fine. So she hopefully now knows she's got to stay out of everything. Rochelle Tucker. But what does that do to you mentally when you know you have four fouls? It's hard after. And a hold call, and the foul will be against the Lady Jays. Sydney Salachek picks it up. Fouling Kissinger. You know, it does make it difficult because, as I said, on defense, they made that change so Sydney Slatchuk couldn't drive. But then Brooke is in the case where she's on help defense. She's really just going to have to stay on the outside. But Pierce is going to want to take it to Brooke. There's a freshman, Taylor Kissinger, with the three pointer. And Minden back up by one, 41 40. Just the second lead of the game for the Whippets. Both times they were one point leads, and both times, the last time Pierce responded right away. Swatted away into Tucker. Tucker can't get the layup to go. And Emily Malcolm in there doing a great job on the inside, coming in off the bench to get that big rebound, which Rebecca Stewart was doing at the beginning of the, the half here. Brooks three on the way, well off, no touch. And it will be Pierce's ball. Forty-one forty. period number three. Darren Sindelar. You mentioned it before the game. He said our biggest obstacle all year long has been our inexperience. They replaced five seniors from last year, but Tucker has been huge today and continues to be. Tucker with the bucket, and she now has 19. Nine of 15 from the floor. Rebound back up strong. No shot. They'll call the foul on the floor. Well, Taylor got the shot off, but the foul came prior to the shot. Third personal foul now on Bramer, so that will put J.C. Bramer on the bench. Not yet, I guess. Not yet. Sindelar looking to his bench, but she's still in there with three. Looks like Shelby Brettschneider is going to come in, and Shelby's done a great job. Oh. She came in, scored eight points that first half when JC had to go to the bench with fouls. Nice drive and bucket by JC Brettschneider. 
a chance for a three-point play. Foul called on Jenna Denny, and we have a timeout on the floor. 3.52 to go in the third. Tight ball game. Large trucks and trailers can easily drive through a state highway roundabout. The center of the roundabout has a low raised area for larger vehicles to drive over if necessary. It's called the apron. Visit the website for more information about driving a roundabout. When we transform Nebraska corn into ethanol, it doesn't disappear from the food supply. It just takes a little detour. Ethanol is made from the starch. The rest of the corn becomes livestock feed to create meat and dairy products, corn oil, sweetener, and other food ingredients, and maybe a little carbon dioxide to make your soft drinks fizzy. Homegrown ethanol helps satisfy America's hunger for energy and the world's appetite for feed and food. Nebraska's Family Corn Farmers, sustaining innovation. Pierce in the middle of a 4-0 run. On top now 44-41 and trying to convert the three-point play will be J.C. Brettschneider. J.C. will play softball in college next year at Platt Community College in Columbus. Only senior on this team, as Trudy said earlier. As the ball game goes on, you know, the free throws are going to become a big factor. Pierce has shot 14 free throws already in this game. Three-pointer by Jamie Kissinger off. And now Pierce with a four-point lead in the ball. Both times that Minden has taken a one-point advantage, Pierce has really stepped on the gas pedal, and they do it again. A 7-0 run by Pierce after Minden took a one-point lead. The same thing happened the last time the Whippets had a one-point advantage. A 7-0 Pierce run. And you know, the different, one of the differences is Minden is getting some good shots. They're just not falling right now, and that's what Rick is saying at halftime. We'll get it going. At some point, you feel your shots are going to fall or need to fall at this point. Three on the way, rattles off, good rebound by Malcolm, who's in there. Another three. Kissinger with the fist pump after she drains it. She's got that intensity going right now. You know, really, you wouldn't see very many players with four fouls on the court right now in the third quarter. But Rick knows he's got to keep her out there just for that reason to get the, the score that they need. Now she's got it again. She thought about a three from the top of the key there. Three on the way, off the front of the rim. So Brooke Kissinger with six three-pointers in this game. That gives her 14 now for the tournament. That's a new class C1 state record as a nice drive and bucket by Shelby Brett Schneider. A new C1 record, the all-class record for a foul called on the floor by, or on Rochelle Tucker. And again, that's where, you know, Taylor's playing on the inside and the foul probably came from Rochelle right before, you know, Taylor was trying to make her move there, which the Pierce fans wanted the foul on Taylor there. Second foul on Tucker. As I was saying, the all-class record for threes is 15, and that gives her 15. Ties the all-class record for three-pointers in a state tournament. Something says or tells me she's going to get at least one or two more shots. <laughs> Sometimes I think she takes them and she's not even open. She just knows that she needs to shoot. She knows her role on this. They all, all the Kissinger sisters do. Here's Taylor Kissinger. Off to Jamie. Jamie drives in. Good bounce pass. Bucket underneath. And a good rebound by Brett Schneider. Here's up by two, 49-47. Good crossover dribble by J.C. Brett Schneider. 
Three on the way. Off the front of the rim, rebound. Right back to Brooke. Drive in this time. The foul will be called on Sydney Salacek. Salacek picks up her second. She'll take a seat. One more look at it. Here's a good drive by Brooke. You know, it looks like she's trying to take it right inside there, going past Rochelle. And Darren Sindelar will take a timeout for the Lady Jays. 49, 47, 50 seconds to go here in period number three. Well, you know, somebody who maybe not around Nebraska or would like to watch these state high school championships. They are being streamed live at netnebraska.org slash sports. Or you can also download the NET Nebraska app. Download our free app at netnebraska.org slash apps. And check out these high school championships online or on your mobile device. You know, we've talked, Larry, about the threes right now. Um, Brooke has also tied the most threes in one game. She has seven here today. Um, and 15 for the tournament. So she's tied the all-class record for the threes as well. And we have a whole quarter to go. I think we're going to see a lot more threes from all of them, actually. There's Jamie's three on the way. Got it. Minden back on top. You know, that's 36 threes down here at the wow. state tournament from just the Kissinger sisters. I think there's lots of practice at home on the threes. What were you telling me? Dad warmed up the uh, <laughs> the outbuilding, right? I heard they have a heated shed that they can shoot in. <laughs> Off the rim and out. Benden will take it over with 10 seconds to go. They'll look for one shot here with a one-point advantage. This equals Minden's largest lead of the game. They've had a one-point lead three times. Jamie's three on the way. Off. The shot is away and no good. What an exciting one we have here in the C1 State Championship game. Minden, hot from outside. Pierce dominating inside. The final quarter on the way. No matter how you look at it, animal agriculture helps Nebraska's economy. The livestock industry provides increased tax revenues for schools and community services. Livestock enterprises also create jobs while contributing to existing businesses such as local banks and grocery stores. A thriving livestock industry helps maintain our current way of life, but also provides opportunities for the next generation of farm families. The Nebraska Soybean Checkoff helps to raise awareness of the importance of animal agriculture to Nebraska. Ever wish your bank were right at your fingertips? Hey, honey, can I keep it? I know, right? I'm gonna go strap it to the car. <laughs> Mom, do you have any idea how expensive books are? It was such a lovely time. Oh, you know what, don't forget to give me that. Whoops, that was expensive. <laughs> I can pay for that. <sighs> In Branch, online, on your iPad, iPhone, Android, or Blackberry, U.S. Bank is there when you need us. Mended from outside, Brooke Kissinger shooting 50% from beyond the arc, 7 of 14. And she tied her own state record for three pointers in a single game. She held that record, broke, set that record two years ago against Boone Central. She had seven three-pointers in the semis down here. That broke a state record held by Maddie Murray of Wahoo. So now she's looking to break her own state record. Jenna Denny back into the game for the Whippets. Emily Malcolm will take a seat. Underneath, shot not good, rebound and back up. And that will put Tucker at the line. So interesting trend here is Minden outscored Pierce 18-11 in the third. Each time Minden has taken a one-point lead, Pierce has gone on a 7-0 run. 
There's a good look at a rebound by Rochelle Tucker. She's been good on the inside with those rebounds and putbacks. Darren Sindelar's team, very efficient at responding to Minden's leads. Rochelle now with 21 points. You know, she has, right, she has um, an 18.5 uh, average, so both Thursday and today she's gone above that average, stepped up for her team here at the state tournament. Foul called on Allie Rouse. Rouse picks up her second personal foul, and remember, Brooke Kissinger playing with four personal fouls. And Rebecca Stewart also with four fouls. She's on the bench for Minden. They're letting Brooke play through it. Right now, um, on the inside, Jamie Kissinger working very tough on Rochelle Tucker, but she's done it. Rochelle's done a great job of posting up in there and wanting that ball. 4-0 run. Three-pointer rattles out. Taylor with the rebound. Back up with the right hand. And the rebound to Pierce. 4-0 run by the Blue Jays. And Tucker with 23 points in the game. Here's Tucker with it. Drive by J.C. Brett Schneider. A 6-0 run. And you see the quick timeout called by Rick Cromosta. And the Lady Jays respond once again. Each time the Whippets have taken a lead, the Jays have gone on a run. Yeah, a great drive there by J.C. Brett Schneider. You know, the momentum has switched here a few times here on the half. Minden came out, you know, going right after it at the very beginning. Now Pierce is coming back with theirs. I mean, what a great start to the day, Larry, with this game that we have going here on the very first game of the day. And we appreciate, appreciate everybody watching from across the state, and we'd love to hear what you have to say. You can send us an email, give us your feedback on our coverage of the NSA High School Basketball Championship. We certainly focus on delivering the best high school and collegiate events available in Nebraska. So we'd love to hear, have you enjoyed our championship telecast? Please send us your comments at sports at netnebraska.org. Let's go over to Andy. What is a whippet? Well, a Minden whippet, their mascot's a greyhound dog, but that's just the end of the story. The origin of the story dates back to the 1920s when they were the goats. Well, there's a car named the Whippet that a local dealership sold. So a group of students went to the school board and said, hey, let's change the nickname. School board votes it in, and hence, the Minden Whippets. Larry Bexie. Yeah, that, that's better than right now saying the Minden Goats lead it, right? Uh, <laughs> good change by the student body. You know of a team with the nickname of the Goats? I do not know the Goats as a mascot. <laughs> <laughs> Certainly wouldn't want to be a goat in a situation like this, would you? <laughs> Three out of the way. Back into the game now for the Whippets is Rebecca Stewart. So two Minden players with four fouls on the floor. Yeah, and Rebecca Stewart did a great job there on that on the rebound because now Rochelle Tucker has three fouls as well. 55 50. Knocked it down. Three pointer by Sydney Slotchek. Big one. She's two for two from outside the arc. Three the other way. The Whippets rebound to Tucker. Five forty-five to go in the state championship. Pierce on a 9-0 run. Another three on the way. Off the back of the rim, tipped around. Jump ball called. Quick whistle there on the jump ball, but it will go to Minden. You know, and that's one of the things Rick's talking about on his defense. 
you know, like the second shots there, the, the rebounds that Pierce is getting fighting after the ball. He wants, Rick wants his girls to be going after that ball all the time. They need it at this point, every single rebound. Quick turnaround and shot, no good. Rebound back up strong. We have a push on the floor. That will be called against the Lady Jays. J.C. Bramer picks up the foul. That's four now on J.C. Bramer. And back into the game now for the Jays comes Shelby Brett Schneider. Bramer will take a seat. Jenna Denny also back into the game now for Minden. Rebecca Stewart goes strong. And now another foul underneath, and that's four now on Tucker. So Tucker with 23 points in the game picks up her fourth foul. And that will put Stewart at the line. You know, now it's going to come down to who can play with the four fouls because each team has their, you know, their leading scorer playing with four fouls. We still have 520 left in the game. It looks like they're both going to stay in, Brooke and um, Rochelle, into the game. So it'll be, you know, who can last out here, who can not you know, make that last foul here of the state championship game. Pierce now by seven, 58-51. Tucker guarded closely by Kissinger in a quick timeout. Called by Darren Sindelar to save the possession. Five oh four to go here in this C1 State Championship game. And if you'd like a DVD copy of this game or any of today's NSAA girls basketball tournament games, you can give us a call at 800-868-1868. Be a good one to get a DVD of. An exciting finish headed your way here in the C1 championship game. Once again, 800-868-1868. A DVD copy of this or any of our state high school championship basketball games. Great crowd on hand here this morning at the Pinnacle Bank Arena. Beautiful new facility for state high school basketball championships. And as excited as fans and players were to have this venue, they're equally excited about the new Bob Devaney Sports Center and having that as their second facility because the renovations made over there, still seating 7,000, has just been a welcome second venue for these state championships. Yeah, it really has. And this arena here, you know, is just in a great location for people to be down here in the Haymarket. Um, and there's just not a bad seat in this whole arena either. It's a great place. Pierce really working the ball, the drive. And a foul called underneath. That'll be called on Taylor Kissinger. And that's Taylor's fourth foul as well. So <laughs> we have a lot of people with four fouls that have been big factors here in this game. And, you know, really, Larry, both teams have a lot they're playing for. Um, you know, right now, as uh, J.C. Bramer comes in, she has four fouls, but she's coming in right now for Rochelle Tucker, who also has four fouls, probably going to give her a rest, get her back in. But both teams having, you know, Pierce is trying to get another state championship. Minden has a lot of records going here individually and team-wise. If they get to 53, they're also going to, you know, break the C1 tournament scoring record as well. So I think we, you know, this is a great matchup for that first game of the state championship. Minden gone cold from the floor the last three times down the floor. Trail by eight. As we near the four-minute mark of this game. 59-51, Pierce happy. Work a little bit of clock here. Yeah, they're looking probably to take some time off the clock. Minton hasn't been in very many games, as Andy was mentioning, even by, you know, 10 points. Good dish. Lay it will go. Rebound strong by Brett Schneider. And a jump ball, and it will stay with the Lady Jays on the jump. Boy, good rebound by Brett Schneider there. Good drive and bucket to keep it alive. Rochelle Tucker back into the game now. She'll come in with four fouls, so. 
Two Kissingers, Stewart, Tucker, all with four fouls. Tucker with it up top, and Pierce happy to work the clock. With an eight-point lead, force Minden to foul. Get him in the bonus, and a good takeaway, and then a foul will be called on Brett Schneider after it was taken away from her. Good steal by Jamie Kissinger. And that will put the Whippets in the one and one. Seventh team foul by the Jays of this second half. Yeah, and that was a you know great defense there by Jamie Kissinger, taking the ball away and keeping control of that ball. And now, you know, we get down to 337 left. It's gonna come down to a lot of free throws here at the end of the game. Um, right now, you know, Pierce already for the game has shot 18 free throws. Just the seventh free throw of the game for Minden. They're four of seven. You know, we talk a lot about threes can make a change in a game point wise. The other part, the other place in the game that can make a change is free throws, especially at the end of a game. Rattles around and falls in for Jamie Kissinger. Pierce breaks the press. And now the quick foul by Ali Rouse. And that will be the third personal, make it fourth personal foul now on Rouse. So four Minden players with four fouls. Rouse, Taylor, and Brooke Kissinger, and Rebecca Stewart. And here's Ali Colmos. Colmos at the line to shoot one and one. And both teams now in the one and one for the last three minutes. Misses the front end, an opportunity to cut into that lead. Pierce stays in that 2-3, but they're also making sure that they know where Brooke is. Off the back, no good. Rebound to J.C. Bramer, and a jump ball called, and that will be with the Whippets. A couple heads-up plays here by Jamie Kissinger late in the game, one on the takeaway. And there to force the tied up ball. And she only has two fouls, so she's one that, you know, can go in there and try to get the ball and get a steal. Salachek not giving any room to Brooke Kissinger. Kicks it over to Jamie. Jamie's three on the way. Off the back of the rim. Long rebound chased down by Brett Schneider. foul called on Jamie Kissinger. So that's Jamie's third. And still one and one now for the Lady Jays. There is the foul trouble. Yeah, he has just about every one of his starters, almost, with four fouls. I'm sure that hasn't happened a whole lot right. this season. And neither has it happened where they've been down seven probably with 246 left. JC Brett Schneider knocks down both free throws. Extends that lead now to eight. With 241 to go. Three on the way. Kissinger off. Jamie Kissinger chases it down. A little runner in the lane off the glass. Taylor rebounds. Brooke Kissinger, the runner, and she's fouled. Brooke Kissinger now to shoot two. Foul called on Sidney Solacek. That's the third on Sidney Solacek. You know, I'm sure Rick wanted the field goal percentage to be a little bit better. Um, you know, he's, they've shot 41 threes. That's a lot of three-pointers, but that's what he wants his team to do. The other part, though, is they're only thir shooting 30%, you know, from the field goals as well. Both free throws good by Kissinger.
Now Minden's going to put that full court man-to-man -man pressure on. They want, need to, you know, cause those turnovers at this point. Taylor Kissinger with the foul. And that is the fifth personal on Taylor. So Taylor Kissinger fouls out. And the freshman with 11 points. Bright future for that young lady. Absolutely, you know, she comes into the game, you know, as a freshman and controls the ball, knows what she is to be doing, you know, at that age and at this level. Did a great job this whole tournament. Brett Schneider at the line. Brett Schneider averages 10 a game. First one off the front. And the double bonus now, so they will shoot two the rest of the way. 61-55. Second one is good, and free throws become very important down the stretch. And a timeout by Darren Sindelar and the Lady Jays. Up by seven. We yeah, talked about it early, but Pierce's ability to respond to Minden's leads has been key in this game. Three different occasions, Minden took that one-point lead, and each time, Pierce went on a big run. They really did, and that is a huge factor that they didn't fall down at that point. They kept coming back with those shots and trying to extend their lead a little farther, which at the very beginning of this half, you know, Minden came out at the beginning of the second half and really took it at Pierce and came back. But then Pierce did the exact same thing, and they've done a great job. They haven't had J.C. Bramer on the floor much because she's been in foul trouble. Shelby Bretschneider came in off the bench, has done a great job to fill in in that position as well. Pierce trying to hold on down the stretch. Minden needs to knock down. Still plenty of time with 2.13 left. Nothing decided yet. Seven-point advantage by Pierce. You know, it really is. I mean, now, as you said, it's going to come down to free throws at this point. Um, you know, the other thing is Minden is shooting those threes. That can make a huge difference. I mean, at this point, you know, really, they're down by seven. It could be almost a two-possession ball game if you get fouled on the three as well. Rick Kissinger will bring it up. Screen set up top for her. Salachek right there to pick her up. Kissinger looking for her shot off the dribble. The three on the way by Denny. Got it. Big shot by Jenna Denny. And a foul quickly on Allie Rouse, and that will be Rouse's fifth personal. So the second person for the Whippets to foul out. I'm sure they're really looking for Denny to pick up the foul. Yeah, that was a great three-point, you know, play by her down there on the last possession. Right now, as we talked about before, it's going to come down to those free throws. Uh, J.C. Brettschneider, you know, a senior, the leader on the floor, stepping up to that three-point line. Right now, Pierce is 14. Um, or excuse me, I'm sorry. Right now, that yeah, they're 14 for 23 from the free throw line, so they really need these at the very end. Brett Schneider's first is good. Right now, this half, Pierce is 8 for 11 from the free throw line. Second one rattles out. Jamie Kissinger to bring it up. Drive, left hand, won't go. Rebound right away and a foul on Addie Woodward. So Addie Woodward picks up her first personal, and that will put Pierce back at the line. And if Pierce continues to hit the free throws, it's going to be tough for Minden to get back into it. Yeah, it really is. You know, two free throws here makes it pretty tough for them. Again, you know, Minden has a lot riding on them. They're the only undefeated team coming into the state tournament. Um, they've set lots of records with the threes, so teams know that. And Sydney Slachek has done a great job on Brooke, you know, Kissinger this whole game. Both free throws good by J.C. Brett Schneider. Brett Schneider 
now with 14. Kissinger drives in, can't get the layup to go, and a jump ball. And it will be Pierce's ball on the tie-up. Now back into the game comes Rochelle Tucker. J.C. Bramer will take a seat. So, you know, we still have quite a few that are in foul trouble that are on the floor, but only a minute 27 to go here. Pierce really probably wants to take the time off the clock right now. And Minden is going to be looking to foul, but they're going to be probably a little choosy on who they foul here. Foul called there on Addie Woodward. Make it Denny. Jenna Denny picks up that foul. Her second. And that will put Shelby Brett Schneider at the line. Brett Schneider was big early in this game. She came off the bench. When JC got in trouble. And Brett Schneider had eight points, five rebounds in that first half. It really helped. Pierce hang on to that lead. Second free throw on the way. That's off the back of the rim. And now Minden with 1.15 to go in a situation where they need to knock down some threes. Yeah, they really do. You know, like I said before, it's a two possession game. You know, really, if they can get fouled on the on that three pointer. But, you know, Darren Sindelar, I'm sure, you know, he's been there for eight years as the head coach. He's also saying make sure we're guarding them, but we also need to take care of the ball on our end as well. They're coming up Monday night on NET television. You can see the factory at one of America's finest and oldest glassmakers. That's West Virginia's Blinko Glass. Company representatives will actually be in the NET studios showing their unique works of art, including a special commissioned Nebraska piece. So you don't want to miss this. Watch Blanco Glass behind the scenes. To find out how these beautiful hand-blown glass pieces can be yours. That's Monday night, 7 Central on NET1. There's been a glass ceiling on the Minden Whippets program they have yet to been able to break through and win the school's first ever state championship still an opportunity here down by seven with the ball 115 to go lady jays they broke that glass ceiling last year winning their first ever state championship jays now trying to make it two in a row yeah right now darren has rochelle tucker on the bench right now she has four fouls, so he wants to keep her out there, making sure that she's on the offensive end. Tipped away. Brooke picks it up. Double screen for her off the front of the rim. Great block out by Salacek, who got the ball and then tied up. So Rebecca Stewart taking a chance, got the tie up. And on the tie up, it will stay with the Whippets. You know, right now, it's just probably a little frustrating for Menden. They just can't get it to go in the hoop. They've tried driving to the basket. You know, they're having problems on the outside now, making their threes. It can become a little frustrating, but they got to keep themselves in it. They still have 50 seconds. Throwed not good. A rebound in the hands of J.C. Bramer, and Bramer is fouled. Foul called on Jamie Kissinger. That will be her fourth personal foul. So now both Kissingers in the game with four fouls. Taylor already fouled out with five, and Rouse is on the bench with five as well. Bramer now to shoot two. Rattles out. Three possession games, so not done yet with 45 left. But Minden's going to need some help. Into the game for the Whippets is Josie Madsen, 5'7 junior forward. You know, a lot of times if you had a seven or eight point lead with 45 seconds, you would think you're probably okay, but not playing against the Kissingers because Brooke herself can take over the game. Off the screen. Foul called underneath on Brett Schneider. Kissinger, Brooke will go to the line. 
to shoot two. Both teams in the double bonus now. That's the tenth foul on the Lady Jays. First one by Kissinger is good. Annie Woodward now in for the Whippets. Michelle Tucker back in for the Lady Jays. There's Kissinger's line on the morning. 7 of 18 from outside the arc. 27 points, and she's been dealing with four fouls since early in the third. She picked up her fourth. And a foul called there on Addie Woodward. Yep. And Salachuk will go to the line to shoot two. Is Menden looking to foul right away? They still have 33 seconds. They're down by five. So they need to get that foul quick. Put Pierce in the position where they need to make their free throws. Right now, Pierce is, you know, shooting this half 55%. They've shot 18 free throws just this half. First one on the way. Got it. Big one. Makes it a two possession game. So Salachik now with the second one. Money. Two big free throws by Sidney Salachik. That's going to make it tough with 30 seconds to go. Denny's three pointer on the way is off. Rebound. It goes off of the hands of the Jays and out. Last touch by Brett Schneider. So the Whippets with another chance here with 25.6 to go. And a 30-second timeout called by Rick Cremosta. Yeah, this would be a key play right here. They need to get a bucket right here. So I'm sure he wants to set something up, you know, for either Brooke or Jamie to get a three on the outside or a quick dish on the inside and then a quick foul. So this the C1 championship remind you class D1 coming up immediately following the conclusion of this that is Humphrey St. Francis and friend friend coming in at 27 and one in the year St. Francis 25 and 2 11 a.m. this morning immediately following this C1 championship between Minden and Pierce and you might as well Stay with us throughout the day because we will have six state champions crowned by the end of tonight, all right here statewide on your home for sports NET. Coming off the screen. The double screen. And a travel call. And that is going to just about do it. Down by 7.20 to go. Unless they can come up with a steal on the inbound, and they can't. A quick foul committed by Josie Madsen, and once again, that will put Salachek at the line. You know, one of the things um, yesterday, when Pierce came out yesterday, um, they started out a little bit slow yesterday, and then started to come back more on the, in the game. Well, today they came out very quickly, and had a great start to the game and they've continued it the whole time and that's probably one of the things Darren was a little bit worried about after half is to not let down at that point and they have not they've kept taking it at Minden well and for Minden they've really gone cold from the three-point line 21 percent is their three-point percentage in this half overall it's under 30 percent typically not what you would see from Minden but this day belongs to the Pierce Blue Jays and as time runs down the Blue Jays have won back-to-back -back state championships. So Pierce had never won a state championship prior to last year, and now this ladies' program has two in a row. The 2013-14 Class C1 state champs the Pierce Lady Jays trophy and medal presentations coming up right here on NET Sports. When you've been around for more than a century, you understand the power of generations, the value of nurturing and developing those who will carry on the legacy of agriculture and food production. That's why the Aurora Cooperative helps young people gain the experience, expertise, and wisdom to feed the world, be good stewards, become responsible community leaders, and continue setting the example for the generations that follow. 
The Aurora Cooperative, growing opportunities. Hey mom, I need to talk to you about something. You took me on campus visits and helped me with college applications, but there's still something we haven't done yet. It's time to complete the FAFSA so I can get financial aid. I know you've been stressed out about this, but don't worry. Education Quest has tons of resources on their website to make the process really easy. You guys have been there for me every step of the way. Just returning the favor. Get help with your FAFSA at educationquest.org. Coverage of the NSAA Girls High School Basketball Championships on NET is made possible in part by the Nebraska Soybean Board, MPPD, Nebraska Public Power District, the Nebraska Corn Board, Constellation, Nebraska Department of Roads, and by Aurora Cooperative. A big thank you to all of our sponsors who help us bring you the NSAA Basketball Championships on NET. We couldn't do it without your support. Ah, down go the Nets for the first time today from here at the Pinnacle Bank Arena. Pierce wins its second state championship, 69 to 60. And now for the medal and the trophy presentations, let's go to our public address announcer. Here's Rich Broderson. The Nebraska School Activities Association is honored to have medals and trophies for both of these outstanding teams. Presentations will be made by NSA Executive Director Rhonda Blanford Green and Board of Directors Jane Beller from Battle Creek, Ellen Gary from Medicine Valley, and U.S. Bank Representative Jeff McCune. Here are the awards for the Class C1 runner up, Minden High School. Well, head coach Rick Cromosta and your assistants, please step toward the middle of the court to present the silver medals to each team member. Players, as your name is called, please come forward to receive your medal. Number five, Annie Woodward. Number 10, Maddie Hoskins. Number 11, Josie Madsen. Number 20, Allie Rouse. Number 23, Jenna Denny. Number 24, Taylor Kissinger. Number 32, Ashton Bolt. Number 33, Janae Boudreau. Number 34, Lily Steen. Number 44, Marissa Weaver. Number 45, Rebecca Stewart. Number 50, Emily Malcolm. And to the seniors, number 22, Brooke Kissinger. And number 40, Jamie Kissinger. All of you are welcome to receive the runner-up trophy for your school. Congratulations, Minden High School.
And now to the champions. First head coach, Darren Sindelar. We have a special award for you. Now, coach, hand out the gold medals to your championship team members. Number four, Casey Sutherland. Number two, Allison Colmus. Number 10, Shelby Brechtschneider. Number 12, Sydney Solacek. Number 14, JC Bramer. Number 22, Kate Asmus. Number 24, Brianna Pult. Number 30, Randy Sporletter. Number 32, Christina Schutt. Number 42, Rochelle Tucker. Number 44, Morgan Stone. And to the senior, number 20, J.C. Rechschneider. <laughs> Presenting the team championship game ball from Farmers Mutual Insurance, Regional Director of Agencies, Andy Grouse, to head coach, Darren Sindelar. And now, for these outstanding athletes and their school, here is the 2014 Class C1 NSAA Basketball Championship Trophy. Congratulations, Pierce High School. Well, they came into the state tournament with the number seven overall seed. They lost five seniors from last year. I'm not sure this is a spot that Darren Sindelar expected this Pierce team to be. I don't think he probably did either. But you know what, you got to give credit to them. They came out today, never backed down on anything and kept taking it at them the whole time, no matter whether they were in foul trouble or not. They played a great game. So that's the exuberance of the champs backstage. Andy Kindy is with the losing head coach. Yeah, thank you, Larry. Unfortunately, there is another side of the story, and this is the Minden head coach, Rick Mosta. Rick, um, what was the difference there in the fourth quarter when Pierce was able to pull away? Oh, we missed. Missed some shots, of course, and they made some shots. It uh, pretty simple game as far as that goes, and we fouled ourselves into big time trouble throughout the game. So we were kind of running out of bodies a little bit too. But uh, the kids fought hard. It it's a tough defeat for us. I know it's disappointing and difficult now. What will you tell your kids when you get them together? Well, it's always hard that last game, whether it's a state championship game or your last game you play it's always tough especially to say that's it for your two seniors you know so it's going to be tough in that locker room and our kids they're bounced back you know we're, we're lace them back up next year and give it another go i want to ask you about those seniors and especially brooke with the, what a performance by her today um that's what you saw throughout her career i'm assuming yeah she's unbelievable uh, great talent but more importantly a great kid um University of Illinois will be getting a great student athlete there, no question about it. What does something like this do for the program in, turning, in terms of laying a foundation for the future? The younger kids in Minden playing basketball, maybe in the future they can get here and maybe go a step further. Well, you hope that carries over to the to the youth of the community. I think it will. You know, it's yeah. You know, we've been down here several times, so we've got a good thing going. We just need to keep it going. That's for sure. When you look back on this team, undefeated up until the last day, what will you remember most? Oh, I think, you know, there's a lot of, a lot of talent on this team, but uh, I think it's the character of the kids and uh, being around them. Uh, great students, great student athletes, uh, top-notch kids. Uh, we'll miss them. 
I know you don't feel it now, but a terrific, terrific season. 27-1, just a step short. Larry? All right, thanks very much, Andy. Appreciate it. And thanks to Rick Cremosta for spending a few moments with us. His Whippets, as you said, finished 27-1. and one. When we come back, we'll hear from the champions from Pierce. Participating in Nebraska high school activities has taught me about teamwork. I've learned how to lead among my peers. At my high school, I have set goals, and I work hard to accomplish them. I like to run on my cross country team. It makes me feel good about myself. Thank you, Nebraska, for your support of the Nebraska School Activities Association. Over the years, the Nebraska Chiropractic Physicians Association has supported many Nebraska athletes by helping them excel physically. But the mental game is just as important. That's why we're pleased to sponsor the NSAA Academic All-State Award Program, recognizing students and athletes who shine in the classroom and as leaders. We're proud to team up with these exceptional individuals. Together, we can continue to make Nebraska a great place to live, learn, and play. What should you do if you see an emergency vehicle while you're driving through a roundabout? Traffic in the roundabout should not stop. Signal your turn to the right when you exit the roundabout. Exit the roundabout before pulling over to allow an emergency vehicle to pass. Please, for more information, visit the website. Coverage of the NSAA Girls High School Basketball Championships on NET is made possible in part by Blue Cross Blue Shield of Nebraska by U.S. Bank and by Education Quest Foundation. A big thank you to our sponsors who help us bring you the NSAA Basketball Championships on NET. We couldn't do it without your support. Back here at the Pinnacle Arena, we're going to look at some stats here from the game, from the Class C1 game. You know, as we look at some things, it's obviously the field goals. Um, you know, the, the first, uh, excuse me, for the game, Pierce shot 46% and Minden shot 29%. A big change for Minden was their three-point field goals. They were 38% the first half and 21% the second half, which makes a big difference for them. And the other part is, as Rick said, they ran out of bodies, you know, there for a while. And as you look at Pierce, for their bench points, they had, you know, people come off the bench, they scored 10 of their points from the bench, as Minden only had three there at that time. But as you know, as you look at it, it was a close game. Uh, congrats to Pierce on, on their Class C1 state championship. When you've been around for more than a century, you understand the power of generations the value of nurturing and developing those who will carry on the legacy of agriculture and food production. That's why the Aurora Cooperative helps young people gain the experience, expertise, and wisdom to feed the world, be good stewards, become responsible community leaders, and continue setting the example for the generations that follow. The Aurora Cooperative, growing opportunities. Constellation believes in developing the next generation of Nebraska leaders, and we show that support by contributing to 4-H and FFA in the 60 Nebraska counties we serve. Nearly $50,000 over the past two years alone. Constellation provides natural gas for Nebraska homes, farms, ranches, and businesses. Through our support for 4-H and FFA, we're providing energy for Nebraska's future as well. Natural gas from Constellation. Pierce Lady Blue Jays, your C1 champions of 2014, 69-60, your final. Joining me, the victorious head coach, Darren Sindelar. And coach, uh, congratulations, becoming habit, second straight year. What was the difference today? Oh, I don't know. It, it, it's unbelievable. Our kids just played with no fear. You know, they came out from the get-go, and, uh, you know, they didn't back down. We knew that they had some great players and, and that, but, you know, that's why you play the game. And, uh, um, it was unbelievable. It was unique, in fact, because you guys were the state champions coming mm -hmm. in, and yet not many people thought you were going to win this game, and you used that to your advantage. Yeah, we did, and, and we kind of used the uh, 
the, the, the underdog a little bit to our kids. But, you know, we play in a tough conference back home, and, and we had some losses, and, uh, you know, that, that helped us down the road. So, you know, hopefully every time, I, you know, when we can get down here, we win that first game, and, uh, you know, anything can happen playing three days in a row, you know, anything can happen, and, and the shots were able to fall for us today, and, and uh, it, was, it was excellent. We talked yesterday about the turning point, perhaps your season, a five-day stretch, you lost back-to-back -back games. You guys regrouped and then ripped off your run. Was that the key? You know, I, I think it was. You know, I think mentally we were just not where we needed to be at the time, and, and we were able to get focused at that point. Um, you know, physically-wise and athletes-wise, you know, we've got some good basketball players. And uh, so, yeah, it, it was just one of those things that we had to focus as a, as a coaching staff and um, players, and, and everybody came together. And, um, and then after that, you know, we were playing some pretty good basketball. Well, I know how last year felt. How does this year feel to be a state champion? You know, I, I, I don't know if ever last year ever really got to me, you know, but this year's kind of the same way. It's unbelievable. You know, I'm so proud of our community. I'm so proud of our kids, you know, our, our coaching staff and, and the hard work that they do. And, and um, you know, I, I just can't thank everybody enough for that. And, and again, it's probably not going to sink in for a while yet. And you talked about community. Last year you had a parade going through town to welcome you back. You could have another one today. Yeah, I hope so. You know, that's, that's the biggest part of it. When we walk down, our crowd travels so well. And um, when the kids walk out and they see that blue in the stands, you know, it's just an unbelievable experience. Well, the Pierce Lady Blue Jays, your state champions for Class C1. We'll hear from a couple of the Lady Blue Jay players straight ahead. Pierce wins 69-60 in the C1 title game. Participating in Nebraska high school activities has taught me about teamwork. I've learned how to lead among my peers. At my high school, I have set goals and I work hard to accomplish them. I like to run on my cross country team. It makes me feel good about myself. Thank you, Nebraska, for your support of the Nebraska School Activities Association. When something's difficult, like defying gravity, or navigating the new healthcare law, why face it alone? Call or visit us at the Blue Store at NebraskaBlue.com. Ask Blue your questions, like what's required, and can I get help paying for it? Then rely on Blue to help you navigate the system. Most Nebraskans are required to have health insurance or face penalties. Time is almost up. Get what you need. Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Nebraska. Pierce, your Class C1 state champion, 69-60 over Minden. Let's talk to a couple of the winning players. This is Rochelle Tucker. Rochelle, your junior, fantastic. How does this one compare to last year? Even more amazing. Why? Well, I feel like as a team, we are pretty much closer this year. Mm -hmm. So, like, having this achievement together was awesome. Does it feel different, too, that maybe not many people gave you a chance today? Oh, yeah. No one thought we would win, mm -hmm. and we proved everybody wrong. How did you win? Our teamwork. We found the open spots, took the open shots. Everything just kind of fell in our favor. And what do you do to celebrate? We went out for Chinese food. Chinese food. Yep. Nothing says a victory like Chinese food. All right, let's pass along that trophy to J.C. Brettschneider. J.C., the senior on the club. Congratulations. Um, your coach called you the glue. Uh, what does that mean? I don't even know what glue means. <laughs> <laughs> that you bring everybody together. Yes. You're, the, you're the leader. You make things tick. How difficult was this season, uh, especially with some bumps in the road? I mean, it's difficult, but I have four great juniors that help me lead as well. Mm -hmm. What will you remember most, maybe not just of today, but of this season as a whole? Oh, the memories that we made as a team for this year and just the laughs that I had. Was there anything that stood out other than today, obviously? Uh, not really. I guess we... Did it the right way this time, one districts. You guys won it last year, and you had a big parade, like the cars met you. What was that like, and, and maybe another one today? Shows how much our town appreciates us and cares for us. All right, well, congratulations on the state championship. Second in a row, let's bring in Cindy Salachek. Now, Sydney, just talk to your coach. I was standing right next to you yesterday when I believe the quote was, uh, they're going down, uh, they better be ready. Well, they were ready, but you guys were ready too. What made you say that? Um, all of us have been pumped to play Minden the whole entire year. We figured out they were undefeated coming in, and we wanted to be the first one to beat them, and we did, and that's why they were going down. When did you realize that, hey, this could, this could happen, this could become a reality? Right when we got here today. Really? It was that early? Yeah. We, all of us could believe in each other, and we believe in our team, and we believe we could win. I mean, we're a team, and we, like, 
we're family, and it's just amazing how close we are. This has got to be a terrific feeling. What is it like to hold the gold trophy and have the gold medal? It's amazing, especially two years in a row. It's a dream come true. Mm -hmm. Now, what does this say about next year and the foundation laid that about the future generations of Pierce basketball players can look towards you guys? Um, well, for future to come, we're going to have a lot of talent still there next year and the years after that. And Pierce is just going to have a pretty good role on this. Well, congratulations, Thank state you. champion, and take care of that trophy. Uh, Pierce Lady Blue Jays, the first repeat champ in C1 since Bishop Newman in 09 and to 10. They're your champion, 69-60 over. I'm Jenny Herstein, inviting you to join the NET Sports Partners Club. With your support, NET brings you hundreds of hours of sports action each year. You count on NET for Husker Volleyball, Big Red Wrap-Up, and all the outstanding college and high school sports action in Nebraska. And we deliver the best sports coverage to your home, no matter where you live in the state. Thanks to our mobile production studio, live web streaming of our high school sports coverage, and updates on Facebook and Twitter, NET is Nebraska's home for sports. And sports partners like you make it happen. Log on to netnebraska.org and explore the many benefits of joining the Sports Partners Club. Choose from a broad assortment of thank you gifts, enjoy insider news and events, and take pride in knowing that through your support, you put the action in NET sports. Thank you.